Welcome everybody tonight. My name is Agustin Perez Rubio, and I'm one of the curators of the Berlin Biennale, together with Maria Berrios and Lisa Lañado. Unfortunately, Renata cannot be here tonight, but also we are together with the amazing group and team that we built, and it was possible to do this Biennale. You know, Julia, Ada, uh, Mark, and many others, you are here. Thank you very much for being possible to do this third gathering, and also for do this Biennale possible. But this evening, we are in the third and final gathering, and it's a very special night because it was quite hard. You can understand how difficult it was to come up with uh, the possibility to do this Biennale real, you know, during these times of the pandemic. And also because only uh, in the next two days is the possibility to do the Biennale on first. Sunday first is the last day. You have still two days to see. But also because I think that the pandemia also, you know, was quite protecting us in the way that allow us to do it. Unfortunately, on Monday, Germany is going to be in a half uh, lockdown. But still, it was impossible. It was possible to do this third gathering. That mainly it was because we wanted to invite the artists that unfortunately they couldn't come for installation, for opening, to be together with all of us. This third gathering, under the title The Power of Mourning, The Colonial Struggles and Queer Bodies, uh, it's an important also in relation not only for this subject in this gathering, also thinking about the entire Biennale. One of the issues that we, the curators, have wanted to address in this Biennale is the way in which coloniality is rooted not only in territories or objects, as you saw maybe in Gropiusbauer and in another, other venues, but also in our bodies, sexualities and imaginaries. How the coloniality of gender, recalling one of the greatest theories from South America, Maria Lugones, who passed away very recently, is even rooted in day-to-day -day life. This edition of the BB11 brings forward other approaches to many topics, but tonight, is dedicated, is dedicated to how death, mourning, and life after death are experienced from a queer perspective, questioning ontologies, epistemologies, and ethics, as well as bio and necropolitical agendas. The 11th Berlin Biennale's finals gathering aims to move away from Western philosophy and cultural theories, understandings of death and mourning, and present or present other kind of celebrations. Several artists have worked these subjects, mainly through videos and performance in this Biennale, in this BB11, and we will see tonight three of them, three new works that just especially these three artists made for this gathering. Carlos Mota, Naomi Rincón Gallardo, and Bartolina Shisha. But also I wanted to acknowledge and to give and to open more knowledge about this because many other artists love, as we saw FCNN they were doing, or also the amazing video at Cave of Black Mamba, no? uh, uh, Simon and, and Natalia, uh, Natasha Mendoza, together, for example, with the video installation of Elena Tejada, the Peruvian artist, are also in relation of all of this. Considering that for indigenous people, death has been their life silent companions in the start of the colonial conquest. The artistic interventions we are going to watch together are some attempts to deconstruct discourses on death and mourning associated with heteronormative models of familial bounds, chronological lifestyles, models for intergenerational relationships, and adequate responses to biopolitical regimes of health and life. These presentations tonight delve into the cultural ties that indigenous people have maintained in their understanding of mourning as a form of both cultural expression and struggle. In this sense, they broaden the spectrum of sex dissident struggles understood as bodies that are battlegrounds and the colonial resistance beyond their mortality. 
to now myself I'm in the middle of this installation of, of, of uh, drawings. And this is the first of our guests. This is the installation of Carlos Mota, the Colombian artist that unfortunately, due to the corona and due to the many other things, he couldn't come to New York for a very short period of time where he lives. But Carlos has a really great idea because Carlos thought that if my body cannot be there, why we don't do something on collaboration that many of the projects of BB11, not only our curatorial me, uh, team, also, you know, many of the collaborative practices they were developing in this Biennale. So Carlos, in collaboration with Simone Jaikirimoa Patu, maybe you know, German Colombian artist who lives and is based in Berlin. I'm sure that many of you you saw in How and in another performances. And also with the help of with the sound design by Isabel Gonzalez Toro, that she's there in the corner, together we'll present a performance entitled Morning Stage. Morning Stage performs a set composed by 35 of the 41 drawings made by Carlos Mota, based on representation of the devil, such as they are depicted by art history. Historical paintings, historical paintings, illustrations, and sculptures that portrays Satan in hell. In other words, the devil embodied it. Each figure challenges moral standards of beauty, respectability, and behavior that have been naturalized as normativity. Among this army of demons, there are feminicized characters which suggest sexual perversions as typified by Catholic imagina imagination or Catholic imaginary. In this sense, these renders, these sketches of the devil, also respond to colonial ideas about the other, and how normativity is an attempt to objectivize the spectres of sexual, sexual dissidences. For this reason, Carlos Mota, together in collaboration with Simone Jacquirimoa Paitu, is trying to exhort the so-called demons as a way of empowerment and embodiment of their identities. Honoring them is a way of mourning, but also celebrating those bodies that since colonial times until today continues being burned in prison, excluded, and killed. Thank you very much.
Okay, so we just arrived to our second artist and guest tonight, the Mexican artist, female artist, Naomi Rincón Gallardo. Maybe you remember her participation because she has a video upstairs in the AD in our storefront for dissident bodies. Maybe you remember. Unfortunately, Naomi cannot be with us tonight, but she made this special uh, intervention. Sitsi Mines and Nawales Polstergaze. Sorry. <laughs> Sitsi Mines and Nawales Polstergaze is a work that assembles elements of horror cinema, Mesoamerican epistemies, and reflections on the in intensification of necropolitics in her country, Mexico, or in the Mexican territory. This is a work in progress, and I said that because this is just a little a small part of a big product, project that she's developing right now. A work in progress, an exercise in excavation, and resurrection in a place overpopulated with death. In this video, and through a hip hop song, the artist fuses the Mesoamerica godness Tratelulchi, sorry, because my my, my speaking of, of Mesoamerican uh, language is not good, Tlatelculci, with a person found mutilated in a garbage dump. For those who don't know, this de deity is a figure who devours the death, swallows their bones, and feeds on blood. She is the goddess of those who die in childbirth and are friends of the vultures. But Naomi Rincón Gallardo is doing this comparison. She wants to, is comparing her, this godness, with a victim of feminicide. When the world is in danger, the Tzitzimines come down to do their dark, their, their dark work. They are carriers of disease, but also of healing. Their uncombate her is decorated with insects and banners. They assembled male and female, animal, human, and cosmic features. When the moon devours the sun, an eclipse occurs. The Sitsi Mines appears in the form of stars. Vultures, on their part, are sacred Mesoamerican animals. They bring the night, purify the world, and cleanse the stench of the earth that connects the sky and the earth from death. Death without mourning, for premature death, death calculated by constant exposure to plundering and toxicity. From a slow social death, by the precarization of the conditions that sustain our existence, death that walks on our heels in these geographies of terror. The feast consists of enlivening the death, of encouraging their faculties to return to possession state, guided by the memory of touch and pleasure. Thank you very much. Here is a short video of no more than four minutes, I guess. Directo del ano del mundo, alias Necrópolis Colonial, llega un show moribundo de episteme visceral. prematuros que reemplazan los futuros por muertes sin funeral bajo sitios ultrajados por dominios patriarcales huye un magma encabronado de aullidos post-mortem Ferales. Me enterraron boca arriba con la lengua de 
de fuera Colonizada, horizontal, feminizada, abierta Por aguantar presión, mi carne se hizo piedra Si me muevo y perreo, abro grietas en la tierra Rechazando hacerme polvo, accidente, se hizo rudo mi torso Quedó roto mi barriga, arrugada, mis chichis caídas Mis brazos desplegados apuntan hacia arriba Estas garras animales dibujan un cuadrado Los codos y rodillas decorados con cráneos Las piernas bien abiertas a 90 grados Valiendo, cagando, cogiendo Sentada como un sapo Soy madre de ambos sexos dando a luz a los huesos Si te acercas a mi boca te engullo en un beso Bebo heridas palpitantes que borbotean sangre De fruto atrocidades en mis órganos del hambre Me enterraron boca arriba con la lengua de fuera Colonizada, horizontal, feminizada, abierta Por aguantar presión, mi carne se hizo piedra Si me muevo y perreo, abro grietas en la tierra Endurecí mi pecho rechazando hacerme polvo Accidente se hizo rudo, mi torso quedó roto Mi barriga arrugada, mis chichis caídas Mis brazos desplegados apuntan hacia arriba Garras animales dibujan un cuadrado Los codos y rodillas decorados con caños Las piernas bien abiertas a 90 grados Pariendo, cagando, cogiendo Sentada como un sapo Soy madre de ambos sexos Dando luz a los huesos Si te acercas a mi boca Te engullo en un beso Bebo heridas palpitantes que borbotean sangre de crudo atrocidades en mis órganos del hambre. from our uh, second artist to the third one and the final one. We want to be more, you know, concrete this time in the gathering in order not to be so many time together in a space. But now is the turn of Bartolina Shisha. Maybe all of you, you saw the video, La Colonialidad Permanente Ramita Seca at Cropius Bau. And it's a video that also you can see, uh, you know, still until uh, Sunday. But at the end, it was even kind of a miracle for us that we didn't know if at the end Maximiliano Mamani, the person who is uh, featuring Bartolina Shisha, could come. And at the end, he's here and he came, like, he came uh, one week ago. And this is make us so happy that at the end, you know, the artists that couldn't attend the opening or the installation or, you know, to be with us. This it was important with Castiel, Vitorino, and many other artists. Unfortunately, not all of them, they could be here. But in this small, you know, selection of artists, we feel so grateful that at the end they could come. Well, Maximiliano Mamani is an artist from Tilcara, Argentina, who gives lives to Bartolina Shisha with X, to X, and defi defines herself as an Andinian drag folk. To create this character, Mamani was inspired by the historical figure of Bartolina Sisa with double S who was an Aymara guerrilla woman fighting against the Spanish colony. She was executed in 1782, murdering in the main square by having her braids tied to the tail of a horse. 
Bartolina allows Mamani to be able to talk about the inequalities in terms of gender, ethnicity, and privileges, and how the Andinian world has been punished. On this occasion, for tonight, Bartolina Shisha is going to present for the first time her performance, Los Funerales de Bartolina Shisha, The Funerals of Bartolina Shisha. This is a performance. The performance, sorry, is based on how is death conceived in the Andinian world in contrast to the Western conception established by Catholic religion and colonialism. But it is also about how death can be a point of resistance and encounter. The death that crosses the Andes takes many forms in the ways it is conceived, remember it, and experience it. Death take place in many events and ceremonies that build the life trajectories of the people who live in the Andes, like uh, Massimiliano Mamani. Death is not an agon agonizing ending point, as it is for the West. On the contrary, it is a possibility of going through different stages of reality. The collective aspect of rituals builds up the necessary energy for the disease to travel into another world and be able to visit us once in a while. In this sense, the performance becomes a beautiful and meaningful communal ritual to help Bartolina Sisa, the heroic woman in the past, in the, in the 18th century, to help Bartolina Sisa's transition to death. As Mamani wrote in a text, if Bartolina crosses the evil, it is because altogether we helped her. It means that we all can meet in that dimension behind and beyond the evil. This is a collective ritual, continues Mamani, to tell the colonial evil that our death are also in dispute. And if death comes to all of us, our comes to us first, snatched, hurried, and untidy. But that, is, but that is our premise, said Mamani. If our death comes first, I will practice my ritual to defeat the evil. Mamani and Bartolina Shisha.
Thank you. 